Welcome to Future Hidden Movie Gems. I am Jordan. I'm Tatiana. But wait, what does he always say when he walks into the room? Now hurry up and shut up and listen and sit up and I don't... Dang it. Yeah. What does he say? <laughs> Pretty much. Just, just that? Exactly yeah. that? Well, he tosses his apple and it lands, yeah. never lands in the trash can. He, I think he says, hurry up and shut up or something. Yeah. Everybody be quiet now. Shut up. Something like that. I don't even know where to start with this. The guy from Always Sunny in Philadelphia... My favorite character from Always Sunny in Philadelphia, huh. Glenn Howerton. Howerton? Yes. What an interesting name. He is so funny. Uh, so Jack Griffin in the show, he is my favorite character. He plays the psychopath. And he's just kind of a, a less intense character. Like he's still just kind of just as selfish as he is in Always Sunny, mm. but he's not quite the psychopath. You actually get to see that he does have a little bit of a heart in the, mm-hmm. throughout the show, and people try, and there's little moments where he gets to show that, which is really fun, because it kind of reminds me of House MD, where it's like, the whole series, you're like, you know he has a heart, but I think they show it better in AP Bio, mm. and I like this a little bit better. It also has Patton Oswalt. Wait, am I saying his name right? Yeah, Patton Oswalt. It also has Paula Pell. And it also has those three ladies that play the teachers. Oh, but we have to talk about yes, them. Yes, Steph, Mary, and act- Michelle. Their names yes. are Lyric, Mary, and Jean. Or Jane? G- uh, Isn't it yeah, Lyric? Jean Villapuez. Yeah, you don't have to Anyways. pronounce the last name. Anyways, they are hilarious. Oh my gosh. Yes. The way that you've described it is like, hallelujah, they wrote a good script. Like, they had such good writing for female characters in the show. Yes, because, I, well, that's a whole another discussion, but a lot of people are complaining, you know, that women aren't getting enough roles, and so they're starting to force them in, and unfortunately, they're shoehorning them in, and they're not writing them good characters. And there are so many ways you can write good characters, and for the longest time, there has been actually amazing female leads in movies, but lately, they've just been like, it's, like I said, it's been, it feels so forced, and you can tell because... Not in every movie, but just a lot of movies. Yes, I was, I'm sorry if I overgeneralized, but in this particular show I just think they are written so well Mm -hmm. and these three friends are so funny like (laughs) everything they say I mean it just kills me I love their dynamic can tell they've been friends for a long time and they're hilarious like yeah the scene that makes me laugh the hardest the the way they're hitting each other in the face with pizza like I don't know why oh yeah you love that that's funny (laughs) and then the first time I watched the series through when the girls like oh no no it's normal and for some reason like that killed me just like how she says it the <laughs> instead of normal yeah the friend jean <laughs> oh yeah well uh, her her character name is michelle. michelle yeah and and her weird relationship with her husband <laughs> yeah. is hilarious michelle's the odd one out she's my favorite of the three it's so awesome because yes. the other two are like pretty similar in their personalities and pretty sassy and stuff and then she <laughs> Like, like kind of the d- dumb friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's so funny though. And yes, like you said, the principal. Oh my gosh, he's so funny, and it's so funny how much he loves Jack and how yeah. much he obsessed he is, yeah. and he's always trying to be like his best friend, and mm-hmm. he's even willing to give up his position in the top ten most handsome men in Toledo. Toledo, that's right. Toledo, Ohio. And then they also wrote an amazing girl character for. I mean, the the students. I don't care for the the principal's assistant. She drives Paula me crazy. Paula Pell. That's, that's who the, I was But saying. Elizabeth like Lynette. Oh yes, my gosh. Lynette. She's such a great character. I think she is so funny. And then she's yeah. perfect for Jack. Yeah. And their dynamic is great. And I love how she's always doing movie nights. And then he's she's like, we're going to watch John Wick too. And he's like, uh, do I need to see the first one? She's like, do you know how guns work? Like, <laughs> I just think she's so great. And, yeah. like, even their first interaction, like, stealing each other's chair. And, like, she had it chained to the wall <laughs> so he couldn't steal it. Yes, like, he the... met his match for someone that's yes. willing to go to the extreme to, like, um, get what they want and in a funny way. Yeah. And, I mean, I don't even know. I just, I really love the show. I think it's great. Yeah, and then you also add all the kid characters, which yes. is almost oh a collective gosh. single character all together, but not really because there's... A few of them that in the first season that are kind of like the main people that talk, and then also the second season because unfortunately they took some of those main yes kids Colin, away the second season. Colin Tucker uh, Albrizi, he is so funny. Remember, so he, he's yeah. yeah his mom the redhead yeah, and he, he <laughs> he's there at the dinner when oh, Jack so funny. comes over and he's like starts playing his flute and Jack's like really <laughs> or something. yes. And he's totally a, what's, is there a better term than block? He's just. Yes, there's better terms. 
He's a he's a he's a he he's a mood. Um, he he ruins the mood that Jack is trying to set with his mom. That guy's yeah. He's just ruining mom. his chances with the mom. Yeah. So I it's just he's so funny. And then like I love oh my gosh I love Heather. And I made the mistake of telling Tatiana that she is like Heather because looks I am like so, her. No, I did not say that. Or dresses or I looks, said yes, you remind looks. me of her. That's all oh, I said. Okay. And I was talking about how crazy I'm about her because she's nerdy and goofy mm-hmm. and that's the first thing I told you when we were on our second or third date I was at your house and I said you're nerdy and you're like oh I'm, I'm not just nerdy yes because <laughs> you did not like that I think it's a compliment because I think it's a super attractive I just I'm just saying I'm not only a nerd I'm also I also play sports sometimes <laughs> anyways and then but as the show went on you saw oh Heather is actually a really no, awesome character. Even when you said that, I knew she was an awesome character. The way that you said it, I thought you were talking about looks. That's why I was like, and you, because you, and then in defense, you were like, "What? I think she's so attractive." And I was like, "Okay, but the rest of the world, like, she, they clearly dressed her to be look like very nerdy. They have she has like these big glasses. Anyways, it's all to the eye of the beholder. Anyways, what? Heather is amazing, and I love and her. And apparently, she's like how old and playing a high schooler. She's like. Maybe older than the others that are playing high schoolers, because like n- none of them are actually in high school, I don't think. But, but she looks the youngest, but is actually the oldest, something like that. She is born ninety six. Well, but when was this made? When were they producing? It's still it? going on right now. Oh, it's still going on. Season three just came okay, out. Okay, so ninety six, two thousand six, two thousand sixteen. She's like twenty six right now. Yeah. Yeah. And she looks like a high schooler. Yeah. I love her and how much she likes Spence, and I love yeah. that he has like a. A, a, a drawing of her in a Wonder Woman costume. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so great. Oh, I love, seriously, every comment, everything that Heather says makes me laugh so much. They write her character so well. And <laughs> she does it so well. Every episode has such a great, like, side character. Like, I love The Tickler. Such a weird episode. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> he got put in, not timeout, but it's, it's like teacher prison or whatever they call it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because... He he was caught tickling people like it's just so weird and it's so I know, funny. Teacher prison that was hilarious. And that she, he was helping him write his book and I yeah. love how much Jack wants to get out of the town and yeah. But then he has little moments like when he meets that lady at the bar and she starts making fun of the town mm-hmm. and he's making fun of the town because he agrees like it's not as amazing as where he came from mm-hmm. and he's used to the you know the finer things and so a smaller town life and. As soon as she starts making fun of the three girls, yeah, he realizes like you know what, and that's the first time you I feel like you kind of start to see yes. that he does have a little bit of a heart. Yes, <laughs> yes. And I love too that his his best friend he does end up ruining him. Oh yeah. His one goal was to ruin him, and he 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 got in trouble with messaging Heather. Uh huh. And I just oh, there's so many little good things. The show it takes so many fun. I love the nun episode where everybody's so terrified. Oh yeah, that was hilarious. Always feeling guilty, and I I sent that gift to Cameron and Ty. I don't think they really knew what it was. They were kind of like, what am I looking at? But it was yeah. the part where the nun's walking down the hall and she like turns. Oh, yeah, turns her head. And the intense music <laughs> plays. And the kids, like, like, I see what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, kind of this this fear. Somebody like me who is always feeling bad about doing things because mm-hmm. I've got like moral scrupulosity, just feeling constant guilt. It's just it, they portray that so well for some like religious people who are kind of looking down on sinners and stuff. Right. Also, I think it was that episode that the Anthony character started his slow walk that was cracking me up so much. Like, there's silence. It's just, like, he he agrees to do something for Jack. Like, somehow Jack convinced him to do something. And he, so he starts to get up out of his desk and starts walking over to go help him. But he's going so slow, and he's giving such a sassy look over to Jack. <laughs> oh, and then Jack says some kind of comment, like, come on, hurry up. And he's like, you... I'll get there when I get there or something like that. It was so funny. And he did that like one or two more times in the series. That reminded me of the episode too, where the kids are drinking under the house and they're throwing that big banquet for the hospital for his Mm ex-girlfriend. And he's trying to one up his hospital, like, cause she's dating somebody new. I can't Mm -hmm. remember their names, but they're like playing the piano. And then he comes down and sits next to him, starts playing. Oh yeah. I forgot about that. They're both trying to one up each other. (laughs) So funny. Yeah, I love it. I love how like all his diabolical plans go awry and um, he just, except for like you said, ultimately he did get that friend's career ruined, but he ends up choosing the right, like. A lot of his stuff backfires and I noticed you really love that. 
because you're like, oh, sweet justice. <laughs> well, I'm not like, it's just, it's just like, yes, good. That character needs to realize that those things don't work. He needs to humble himself <laughs> and he does, a bit. And he learns, he learns um, and starts making more consistently the the good choices. And like, he's still like at the beginning of every, every episode, he's still like in his selfish mindset, but he just like eventually gets to a point where he always makes the right decision by the end of the episode. And to clarify, we've only seen the first two seasons. We haven't seen the third season yet. Well, I did actually. I I, I didn't finish it because I had just, it felt like at least for the first two seasons, like there's moments in the first two seasons where the humor, I'm kind of like, Okay, that's a little cheese and cringe. Yeah, for sure. But, which I don't mind, because oh, there's so much funny stuff about it. It, it. It's like, not every joke is going to land for every person, because people mm-hmm. have different tastes in the humor. But I felt like, suddenly, that humor kind of became season three. It was like, majority of it felt mm. cringe humor. Yeah. And I was also going to mention really quick that Devin, he left from the first season. He and was the Prince of Darkness. Of favorites, yeah. Well, he was just, I just felt like, had a good dynamic, too, with the, the bully. Yeah, mm. I liked that. Yeah, that they with Dan. used to be bully and bullied, and then they just by sitting next to each other in class. Well, and and Helen, the assistant to the principal, you think she's funny. Well, she, she I has think moments she, that make me laugh. I think she oh, is yeah. acting over the top in this particular show, but I, she's one of the writers, and I think the writing is great. She's a great writer. Oh yeah, but she just oh her character drives me crazy. <laughs> and I, mean, I do think it's really funny though, like how obsessively supportive she is of the principal. <laughs> yeah, no, and th- there's still moments where I still laugh because yes, the writing is very clever and fun, mm-hmm. but there like when she gives so much blood and then she passes out. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, and th- there's lots of great moments. But I just felt like they maybe gave her too much screen time in season three or oh, something. Oh, okay. Maybe. Yeah. I can't even remember. I just remember being, uh, maybe I need to give it another shot. I'm willing to. Yeah, I want to watch it, so. Yeah, you can finish it and tell me if it's worth watching. Oh, okay. Sounds good. <laughs> Love the show. Season one and two are solid, so I definitely recommend them. They There is pretty off-color humor, though, so that's too much. There's a lot of jokes. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Kind of. I mean, there's definitely, I've seen shows mm. where there's more, for sure. Well, yes. I mean, obviously, we, we're about to talk about Uncut Gems, which has a ton. Not so. Uncut Gems, Righteous Gemstones. Oh my gosh, I keep calling it that. Or, <laughs> or I keep calling it Unrighteous Gemstones. <laughs> they may as well be. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. It's okay. Funny. All right. Um, also, do we recommend it? Uh, also, yes. I, love, I love just the whole premise <laughs> of the show. Isn't that so hilarious that they call the show AP Biology or AP Bio? Oh, he never teaches it. And the whole time, he never teaches it. He refuses. Well, it's kind of like The Office. Like the whole premise of like, oh, this this professor, or not professor, this this guy that comes in to be a high school teacher, and he has a Harvard degree, and he just he lost his job at Harvard or, or whatever he was doing, because he, he had a big, he majored in philosophy, and he just thinks so highly of himself, and he accepted this little job at a high school teaching biology. Well, he, be- he knows nothing about biology. Because oh, no, 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 they he kicked does him know out. about biology. They kicked him out because he, he punched an old man. That's what it was, yeah. He was teaching at Harvard and then he, they kicked him out. And then comes to this high school and walks into class. In the very first episode, we learned that he is not planning on actually teaching biology to any of the AP bio kids. And they're all like, but we, we're AP students. We want to learn biology. Please, please, please. And it's this whole thing the whole time where they are wanting so much for him to teach it. But he like ruins their textbooks and like <laughs> refuses. To, and the whole time he just is like, you guys are going to help me with a, an evil plan that I have to, you know, take down the career of, or it's something, some episode that's something different. It's always just like coming in and they're supposed to never tell on him and how does how does he convince them to never tell on him well he just says that he'll flunk them if they say anything oh yeah that's right and it's really funny like one of the episodes you learned that actually he doesn't know about biology and he could, totally could teach it <laughs> he's like to the one girl that like she's the most obnoxious of all of them about like you need to teach us he's like i never said and i didn't know snitch. it yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. It's just that that whole premise is hilarious. And then the rest, whole rest of the series, it's still called AP Bio, even though it has nothing to do. They never talk about biology themes ever, ever. It's hilarious. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. Isn't there one time when, like, he has to fake that he did a dissection with them? And so they do have to, like... Oh, yeah, so you do see that. That's the closest they get to actually talking about a biology theme. Well, Heather brings in her big pig. Yeah, And yeah. she's trying to be all sexy. It's all just cutting it. It's ah, so funny. I love this one. Me too. Tell us what shows you've been watching. Okay, so you did not watch this, but when we went on our trip to California recently, we were able to watch our own shows. I finally watched Encanto, or Encanto. I don't know how to pronounce it. 
I don't know. And it was great. That Bruno song, holy cow. Because, you know, I just had to watch it because I've obviously heard about the Bruno song from so many people. Yeah, so I just wanted to say that I had finally saw it. And I do think I like the Bruno song more than the Is that film song, itself, though, as but... catchy as the song from Righteous Gemstones? Mm, actually, it is. It's a little bit more catchy. That oh, one geez. stayed in... Well, I don't know. Time will tell. Because that one stayed in my head for, like, so many weeks. And um, the right... And I just... <laughs> The Righteous Gemstones one, um, I don't know yet uh, how long it will be getting in my head. But yeah, I liked, I really liked the messages of Encanto, Encanto. And I don't really have much else to say about it. I just saw it the one time. Exactly, because it's trash. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> okay, but the bigger thing is I saw Barb and Star go to Vista Del Mar. And Jordan refuses to watch it. That's fine. I don't want him to because I want to live in my own little world where I just am so happy and enjoy it so much. It is perfect for me. It has Christian Wig. It has oh, the the characters that her and this and this other actress play. Uh, what's her name? Mamono something. Can't believe you like it better than Bridesmaids though. Oh yeah, I do like it better than Bridesmaids. Oh. It is huh hilarious to me it is perfect for me and i love just watching the two of them talk and they're just hilarious like they're these middle-aged women who (laughs) who just like are kind of oblivious to so many things and they just get like so like chit chatty like not gossipy just really chit chatty and getting excited about the littlest things and (laughs) And it's just really absurd. There's a lot of absurd humor and writing in it. And holy cow, I love it so much. I have rewatched it like maybe at least once, maybe twice. And Jordan laughs every time. He's like, he loves that I love it. And he's, but he's also like, oh my gosh, I can't believe we're watching that again. <laughs> it's okay. We all have guilty pleasures. Mine's cube too. So Right. There you go. So yeah, those were a couple that I've seen recently. Peace. Bye-bye.